Hello everybody, this is Ice, and welcome back to another episode of the Redstone Calculator Tutorial Series. Now, in the last video, we accomplished a reasonable amount. In particular, we created something that can both add and subtract. So right now it's in subtractor mode, but if you wanted to convert it back to an adder, you can just do this. Now, hopefully you've sort of understand how addition and subtraction work in binary as of this point. If you don't, again, please leave comments. I'm always willing to help. So, that's that. Now, I'm going to convert this thing back to an adder because there is an important thing that I have to show you about this type of adder. So, the type of adder we've built here is called a ripple carry adder. And that name strikes hatred into the hearts of many good red, supposedly good redstoners. It's not really that bad, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, that reaches. So, this is now a regular adder. So, a pr the main problem with ripple carry adders is the following. Suppose we plug in a 15, 1, 1, 1, 1, in one input. So that, right now, will just go right through and give us 15. That's an output 15 plus 0. Now, suppose we wanted to add 15 plus 1, then what should we see? We should see all of these pistons go down, and this one go up. Well, let's do that. If you look very closely, these go down one by one. This piston goes down first, then this one, then this one, then this one. And it just, and the carry ripples across, because when you do this, what you're actually doing is you're sending a carry down this wire. The carry is rippling across and activating these outputs one by one. That doesn't seem like much of a problem, but say if you had a 64-bit adder, we're not making 64-bit adders, but if you had a larger number of bits, then that would be a long time for this carry signal to go all the way down and activate the last carry out. Because it takes two redstone ticks, you can check that, for each of these carries to happen, so even in this tiny little adder, it takes two, four, six, eight ticks just to ripple the carry all the way across. Now, there are ways of fixing that, and some of them are immensely complicated. There are types of adders called carry look ahead adders and carry look everywhere adders that fix this problem by doing addition in a more clever way rather than the intuitive way that we made last time. But that's really a more advanced topic that I don't want to get into in this series, and so we're going to harness the power of Minecraft, especially, in particular, pistons, to make a faster adder called an instant carry adder. Alright, so the idea of an instant carry adder is to use a certain property of pistons to make this carrying a lot faster. Now, the property of the pistons that we're going to use is the following one. It's that when you... Well, I'll just show you, I guess. Suppose we have... Let's see, how do I want to do this? Does that work? I think it works. Yeah, it does. So, suppose you have a wire that's going through like this. And this goes like this into another piston, like this. Now, if right now we go ahead, this wire just activates the piston instantly, that's obvious. And if we turn this on, then it's going to be blocked, not going to activate the piston. Now suppose we leave this thing on and we start turning this on and off. Well now what we have is we have a NOT gate, right? We have, if this thing's on, then the piston turns off. If this thing's off, the piston turns on. Now the clever thing here is the timings of this. When we turn this switch on, you can see that it takes a moment before this piston retracts. But when we turn the switch off, the wire will turn on essentially instantly and activate this piston at the, in, at the same time I'm pressing the lever. And that's the principle of instant carry for pistons. It only works in Minecraft. This kind of adder cannot be implemented in real life because in real life things aren't instant. But that property of pistons allows us to make an entirely new type of adder. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So, I guess we can build it over here. Is there anything around us? No, and it's nice and bright. So, we're going to start with, an, with a different type of XOR gate, known as Tommy's XNOR. So, let's see if I remember how to build this. Oh, another one. Welcome. 
Let's see if I remember how to build this. You're going to start with four blocks in this flowery shape and put two repeaters like so. These repeaters are going to come into here, and in particular, the two inputs to your adder will be here and here. So right now, this is just an OR gate, nothing too complicated. And you are going to place a block here and a torch here, I believe. Hopefully I'm getting this right. Two torches here. Ah, yes, I'm getting this right, and a block above. So this is the first part. And for this, you're going to need a half slab. Plenty of half slabs for this. Yeah, what don't I need? I don't need that. So, what you're going to do is you're going to come up with this staircase, making sure to put a half slab here, and put a knock gate here, like so. Now, this is an XNOR gate, or an inverted XOR gate. If we turn on this switch, it turns off. If we turn on this switch, it turns on. Now, you can check that this is absolutely the opposite of an XOR gate. In particular, if we put a torch here, it will act like an XOR. <coughs> now, this is a famous XNOR design, known as Tommy's XNOR, and we're going to use it in our building our instant carry adder. Now, just like before, we want to have a half adder, and our AND gate can come from here. Notice that when we turn both of these things off, this wire will turn off, and we can harness that. We can come down here with two blocks, place a block in here, and put that there. This is our half adder, this is our other output, and that's that. Pretty easy. Alright, so this is the first half of our adder cell, and the next thing we want to do is a bit strange. This is where the piston magic is going to come in. So, you're going to come out like this, and put a half slab up here. Now, in this case, you can use glowstone. There are going to be cases where you can't use glowstone, but you can substitute glowstone if you like it better in most of these cases. So you're going to have something that comes out like that, and on the end of it, you're just going to stick a piston. Just like that. Not too hard. And then you are going to come under here, underneath here, like this. Now this will end up being our carry wire that will carry the ones between bits. Alright. The next step is... That should not be happening. One second. Oh, okay, sorry about that. So you want to put a piston here, and up here, like so come in here like this, and you can just stick this like so. Now, what you're going to do is make this. You're going to have two half slabs like this. First one's going to have a repeater. This one you can't use glowstone because, well, clearly. This is going to come here like this, and now you can just come one block two blocks, three blocks up, and now you have something that looks a little bit like this. So, in particular, if we try this out, when we turn this on, we get an output. When we turn the other one on, the output turns off. So right now, this looks like kind of a ridiculous thing, ridiculously overcomplicated, but now we're going to make another one of these. So, just make another Tommy's XNOR next to this, I'm not going to go through this again, and... Well, I will see you in a second. Alright, so, once you have another Tommy's XNOR, it should look a little bit like this. Now, because of staggering, and because of the issues when we stack, we're going to have to make this second one look a little bit different. So, what you want to do is you want to come up with a block like this, but instead of doing what you did before, you can just come around on the back, like so. This leaves a nice snug hole for a piston to go in, and also there. Leaves a hole for a piston. Then you want to come up with another one of these things, and there you go. That's that. So now we have a 2-bit adder, except for the fact that this is not hooked up. So that's easy to fix. This one, this is now exactly the same as the last one. You can just come up here, and up here with these, and bring your wire down in below. 
So what this is going to do is it's going to finish the next part of your instant carry adder. And now we'll be able to see kind of the concept of this thing. If we go ahead and we turn on one input, then we'll get an output. If we turn on both of these, then this should carry over. So let's see what should happen. When we turn this on, this Tommy's XNOR will, this wire will turn on, closing this piston and turning off this input. That's good. We also want the one to carry though, so this carry torch here will turn on and go directly into this one. So, just as expected, we get an output there. So that's pretty cool. But now we want to th stack this thing over. And we're almost ready to do this. All we need to do is come in here, three blocks up, two blocks over, and a piston. Now this one isn't going to have any extra bit to cover it, so for now, you just want to put a lever here and turn it on. This is your instant carry adder, and now we want to stack it. Now to do that, it's a very bad idea always to stack these extended pistons. So first of all, we want to just de-extend all pistons. So get rid of these two bits of redstone wire for a moment, and now we can stack. <coughs> so what you want to do is stack from this block in one corner, pause one, oops, turn off caps lock, so I don't embarrass myself, and this block, pause two, and stack this over how many times you, however many times you want. I'm going to stack it three times to get an 8-bit adder, since we had two bits to start with. Now you can go through, replace all these, and at the end you'll have this one extra bit, which now you can stick a lever on. And as you can see, I have screwed something up here. Oh, right. You're also going to need to place blocks here, here, and here, so that this doesn't mess up. So this is a working instant carry adder, and we can check it out. So let's do the same kind of problem we did before. If we turn on this thing, this is a 15, then this has just turned off these four wires, which has gone into here and activated this. Okay, fine. Now, you might ask, what happens when I turn on this lever? Well, first of all, this bit is going to be turned off immediately because of the Tommy's X nor. But what this is also going to do is it's going to come down into this torch and around this carry line. Now, instead of having to take two ticks to get to every individual bit, this signal is just going to go through this torch and propagate all the way down as far as it needs to go until it's being blocked by a piston. Now what this will do is it will invert all of these XNORs and turn this bit on instead of these four. So we can check that out. And it does it all at the same time since it's just transmitting down a wire. And that is the main concept of instant carry. Now where does the piston come into this? Well, if we, for instance, had this input on only, and we turn this one on, then of course this will happen, but it happens instantly. And that's where the piston instantness comes in. You can go through that yourself. But this is a kind of instant carry adder, and it's pretty nice. Now, this is going to be a fairly short episode. I don't think I want to go into any more detail about the instant carry adder. Again, if you have any more questions on this adder type, or if you don't completely understand how it works, which you might not, maybe my explanation was terrible, I'll have to watch it again, but if you have any questions on it, feel free to ask in the comments as always. So yeah, that's about it, hopefully you enjoyed, and as always, well, bye now.